Hello everyone, we're back with another interview with the most successful calisthenics freestyle athlete of the last years, Daniel Christo. After almost 200,000 views on the last episode two years ago, we are now talking about his planche advice, about his workout routine, preparing for competitions, and his future steps. Also with this podcast episode, you have the chance to win an advent calendar, which will be available for pre-order on 9th of October, full of calisthenics equipment and accessories. Comment down below why you want to have it. And now let's start into the episode. So we are sitting here after two years, uh, two years after the last podcast. A lot of things have happened. You've won Swoop twice. You've won FIBO twice. You became world champion. A lot of things, a lot of crazy things happened since then. Um, and yeah, my question is, Daniel, do you think you're at the peak or is there more? Is there more to reach? No, uh, first, well, first hi and thanks for the invite. Second, yeah, I don't think I don't I'm even think close to my peak, my and peak. probably I'll be in my peak uh, after two more years if I can predict things like this. But now I'm now getting I'm stronger and stronger, and this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Okay, so um, you don't think you reach your maximum potential yet? Uh, I know you have some crazy plans for the for the future. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what's what's coming next? Okay, so now I'm uh, really focused to increase my level, to increase my skills, and I'm not competing now for some months, let's say half a year maybe. And in these uh, months, I'll be really focused to increase the overall level. And it's already really successful, and I can see that I'm progressing really fast, and it's crazy. And I'm also recovering from some injuries, and this is uh, one of the things that also can increase my level. And in the future, probably my next competition will be uh, street workout ultimate battles again. And I'll give my best to, to win it for a third try. And this is going to be something insane that never happened before. And also, I'm really interested uh, for a burning gate that is only statics because I can see crazy potential to increase the statics. And yeah, that's it for now. We'll see how it's going. But for now, level up is the, the only goal. The only goal. You see a lot of athletes out there who compete a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And um, they, yeah, they, I, uh, there are some voices that if you compete too much, you don't progress and uh, you can't progress too much because you're always in preparation for a competition. And um, so you're taking time off competing to level up. Yeah, I was talking with a lot of uh, athletes that are competing on my level and also in the same competitions and it was so, so crazy how I, was, how I was even progressing when I was competing. Because, you know, when you're competing, you're performing one combo. You're preparing yourself to do one, two, three combos. And that's it. And you're playing only the combos. You don't have time to level up, to level up one element before the competition, to focus on one element, to focus on uh, different type of trainings like uh, bodyweight basics and stuff that can increase also your static levels. You cannot um, invest that much time to learn a new element in dynamics and, and other things. And this is about the competitions. When you have that free time, you can focus on yourself. You don't have that much stress. And the progress is so much better, so much better. I can feel it now. And I was asking myself, hey, imagine I'm progressing really good when I'm competing. What will be if I stop for some months? And I invest that time in only level up in my skills. And I can say now from month and a half or two after the last swap, my level is crazy. It's not even it's not even close to the level that I was in swap. Overall, I'm talking because I have the time to invest in a different elements to focus one training. I'm doing only front lever, let's say one training. I'm doing only planche. And if I have some injuries, I have time to recover them. I'm focused on other things that I have no pain and I can do. And everything is coming. Everything is pretty good. And I think this is the technique that I missed uh, so many years. And now it's time to time to show time for something crazy. That's uh, super interesting to split and to understand the difference between um, competition preparation and um, regular training with leveling up to to concentrate on the specific skills and not to only concentrate on combos like you do before competitions so that's that makes a huge difference right really huge it's a crazy difference i cannot explain you at this moment perfectly because i'm still 
still in the action, you know, I'm still trying the other thing that is without competing and just to level up, but I'm feeling crazy, crazy good. Where do you get your input for training? Like, do you have, uh, who, is, who is your coach? Who is your source of uh, knowledge? Where do you take your knowledge from? I'm actually, I don't have a coach, uh, but I'm around me. There is people that understand even much more than me because they're a professional uh, gymnast coach. And it's something that you can't learn by yourself with only studying and reading, you know. It's uh, really good because you have the kids that are training the gymnastics in front of you and the coach. And the coach is showing you some stuff. But this this is not like I have a personal coach or something. I'm just learning from the people that already know that knowledge. And this is something that I'm uh, transferring, if I can say like this, to my things. And I'm combining my things with this knowledge and the result is just insane. Just insane. And now I'm also testing some things because I'm doing online coaching. I'm uh, training some people and I can say I'm helping a lot to these people. And I, I love the process, you know, because I'm also learning a lot of things and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Do you think these people, these experienced people like you have in gymnastics, gymnastics coaches are missing in calisthenics to get to another level of the sport? Probably yes, but I think at this, at this moment, the people that need to understand, that need to learn and teach the other people are the one with the highest level. For example, that I'm competing now, now at the highest level and a lot of other athletes that you already know at the same level. And we need to know, we need to study, we need to learn so we can push our sport to the limits and to something that is, that is insane. Because gymnastics, it's a totally different sport for me. You know, here we are practicing much more strength moves and with just insane level that gymnasts cannot do but they're much cleaner than us they have a system that they can judge they have a professional coaches and everything so for me this is two different things but it's still a huge advantage for you to have this gymnastics input and this gymnastics background right yeah because it's giving me the basics that i need and with that with these skills and the talent that i understand i have I can push my limits in the calisthenics. So this is something important. But of course, there is a people that I know that are training calisthenics from 15 years old. And now they're like 22, 23. And they have a really good beginning, smart start, working really smart. And now they have a crazy potential to level up. So would you think if you started back in the days, not with gymnastics, but you started with calisthenics, imagine that scenario. Would you be at a higher level now? Would you be at a lower level? Would, you, would it be the same? What do you think? Higher level for 1000 person because the talent I'm born with this thing. And if I realize this thing and I know my talent and my potential, this is something that you can level up and you can increase by yourself. But also with hard work, things are happening. And people are always saying hard work beats talent. That's true. That's absolutely true. But what if... A talent, crazy talented guy is working harder than the others. What is happening now? It's hard to beat a guy like this, you know? Maybe this person wins two times swoop, two times feeble uh, and world yeah, champion. Maybe, in, in, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe okay, it's true. Nice. So um, what does it mean to be talented? Is it your genetics? Is it your mindset? What, 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 how do you define talent? For me, talent is something that you're born with and... There is a people that I know they're super talented, but they don't understand that, you know, and they're st staying on one level and things are, are happening without, without them even training hard. And after they realize that they're really talented and they can see because things are just happening. For example, me, I can say that now my favorite static element is one arm planche. I train it two weeks to unlock a clean form. And there is a people that training five years to unlock this thing in clean form. So this is the talent, but I realize the talent. For example, there is a people that I know about the one arm planche that they have crazy talent. I can see that. And I'm talking with them. Hey man, you know, you can learn it. Just, you just train it one month. If you have a talent, if you have the form, if you have the technique, everything. And they're not really serious about this. And they just train one week, two weeks, they stop. Two weeks again, they train it, they stop. And this is how you lost your potential. 
Yeah, yeah. You call it serious. I call it, um, I, I see a lot of people writing to us, hey, I, I work out six times a week, seven times a week. I work out twice a day. And um, people miss structure or miss the experience from, from exactly. more experienced people. So being serious also means uh, having like a clear structure, listening to your body, not doing too much uh, and having the discipline to, to work when you're not motivated, but also the, um, yeah, the, the structure to not overwork and to yeah, get, go into injuries because you work out seven times a week. Yeah, I have also something in my mind that is important. A lot of people are asking me, uh, hey man, I can't progress anymore. I don't have a motivation. I cannot do it because uh, I don't feel it inside. But it's always like that. People thinking that I'm motivated 24-7 and because of that motivation, I'm progress progressing so much and I'm doing the things like this. No, the, the other thing is that I totally understand why I'm doing it and I to totally understand my final destination and the goal that I have. This is something that people don't have. They're just, they're trusting only the motivation, but you need the final goal and you have the discipline to keep going. Motivation is something that I have now, maybe 95% of the things that I can feel like motivation are on the competition. You know, the other thing is discipline and the final goal that I'm okay. following. Because things happen in your life as well. You have setbacks as well, but, uh, it's important to exactly. keep the structure, to keep the discipline, to, to work towards the goals. Exactly. Nice. Um, so yeah, what drives you these days to, uh, to work, to continue working hard? I mean, you reached everything. I would say you've been uh, by far the most successful freestyle calisthenics athlete of the last two years. Um, and what drives you to get to the, to a, to a new level? What makes you want it more? What makes you want to win? school for a third time what 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 is what is the drive this is probably one of the hardest questions because i'm asking myself the same thing and at this moment i cannot say there is something specific that want uh, that, that is inside of me and it's pushing me to to keep going but i can say it's a it's a lifestyle it's something that i cannot live without you know even if i i don't have the maximum level and i know i'm not uh the best prepared for that competition, I need to compete because it's in myself, you know, it's inside of me and it's just, it's just my life. It's something that I, uh, that I love and something that I cannot live without at this moment. And like I said, the personal goal now is to level up. I want to test myself and I want to push the sport even more. I want to, to show the people there is not something like a limit, you know, and yeah, I think at this moment, this is. This is the reason, and if I can say it's a reason, because I, I cannot understand at this moment the real reason why I'm keep, keep moving, but it's just happening. It's just something that is living inside of me and pushing me. That's super interesting. You said it's a lifestyle, and uh, I don't know if you know the, the story, but uh, Michael Schumacher, uh, I think the most successful uh, Formula, Formula or One driver, um, he was asked after he won his X, like uh, his, his multiple world uh, champion title, like a uh, title, um, he was asked, what, what's the next goal? What's, what's next? And he started crying because he didn't have the next goal. And I think it's super important. When you reach a goal, you have to set another one and you have to set another one. You have to have exactly. something to, to work towards. And uh, you say, you call it, it's a lifestyle because for you, it's a, it's a journey and you enjoy the journey and not only the goals and the successes, but for you, it became your, your lifestyle, I think. Yeah, not only like personally that I feel something is, um, it's not about to collect trophies. It's not about to be a five times or four times world champion. It's about every time that you're becoming a world champion. It's something special that you want to, that you want to feel every time, you know, that you want to feel all the time. But for things like this, to feel it for just five minutes, five minutes, I'm ready to work. 10 years to feel this thing, five minutes. So, and so I don't under, I totally don't understand the people that are one time world champion, let's say, and they stopped, you know, doesn't matter about the sport, how you can stop when you, when you are there one time and you can do it again, again, and again, because you're already one time successful with this thing and how, how you're stopping when you understand the feeling to be on the top and how you don't want to be again. This is a question that I can ask. Even the highest 
level athletes doesn't matter in this sport i don't know personally for me i'm hungry for more you know i want to feel it again again and again and this is something that that's pushing me you know some would call it addiction maybe like uh, it's, addiction. As... it's addiction i'm totally yeah. in a good way yeah in a good way yeah because you, you can decide like um you can decide what what habits and what obsessions you want to uh yeah have you you can Uh, decide if you want to be the best gamer you can decide if you want to become the best athlete uh, it's all about habits and how you spend the time of your day and your focus yeah and i don't i don't know some people are like there are a lot of people like saying and asking me why you're going to compete compete again you have two titles of this competition why you're doing it again for me numbers are not something special it's about the feeling it's about the the journey of these years you know and i want to say when i finish one day because things are happening you know i'll say hey man i'm i'm not just one time world champion but i i was living like a world champion from all these years you know with the people and i have crazy good moments it's not only one moment and this is this is something that made me really happy even from now i understand it and yeah it's pretty good But at the same time, you say no to competitions. You said um, that maybe this was your uh, last FIBO that you did. Uh, you said yeah. no to the World Championship this year. You say no to to some competitions as well. Um, how do you how do you say no to the to the ones finding other, other goals? I can say it for me. It it not depends only about the um, the format or the name of the competition. For me, it's important to compete. I'm ready to try new competitions, high level competitions. You know, I'm aiming for the highest level competitions. If the FIBO next year is going to be again one of the biggest, probably we'll see each other there. But I can't say from now. But I'm not stop uh, I'm not going to stop competing. Yeah, good. So it's it's motivation for me uh, to organize the best FIBO uh, ever with the highest level let's to uh, make you compete, but let, let's see. Um, let's go. Let's nice um yeah okay. so next step burning gate um totally different format uh, for those who don't know burning gate is a pure statics competition and uh, totally differs from swoop fibo beast of the bars etc where it's like about completeness uh, of a freestyle athlete um what is your main driver to compete at burning gate i think it's also legacy showing that you can uh, do statics competition as well exactly you understand things really good so i'm a freestyle athlete uh but i'm also in love with uh, statics and also in love with dynamics so if in the future there is a dynamic competition i'll go for it you know and i have nothing to lose in this type of competitions because my main goal in this sport from the beginning when i start is to be the most completed one in the world so it's a combination of everything but why why i will not i'll try myself in only statics competition because i think i have the level Maybe now I don't have the level on for, to be in the top in statics, maybe first place, but maybe in top five, top three now is possible. But if I go there, I want to, to play on the same, same level that the first three guys will be, you know? And it's a test for myself. It's a other option I can say, and I know a lot of people want to see that. So it's something that I have nothing to lose. I'm definitely going for the first place, but It's not the same feeling that I have for the freestyle competitions for complete athlete. So yeah, it's a test. I can say it's a test for myself. It's nice. I'm super curious how it will go. So next year, uh, the first competition will be Swoop, right? Uh, it will be in May, June again. And then afterwards in September, maybe the Burning Gate. So you exactly. first have to prepare for Swoop uh, in Madrid. Exactly. Um, and then after Swoop, you make a, a, a like... 180 degrees turn in your training approach and fully focus on statics. Can you maybe explain? Yeah, the plan that I have for now is uh, to fo actually is the opposite side. It's interesting for the people, but now I'll focus to level up my statics so much because dynamics at this moment, I don't know if the people can see it from the video, but to do a one big dynamic element for me is just a choice. It's just, just a choice to put one month hard work and I have it complete, completely. So it's something that I need. I understand that I need only maybe one or two uh, bigger dynamic elements and then a little bit more dynamic combinations 
and I can train it together with increasing the statics. So this is what I'm going to focus, mainly focus on statics because I can prepare also for a burning gate and imagine I'm completing swap with one, two more bigger dynamic elements and level of statics that are, that is ready for first or top three for burning gate. This is mango. So I'm preparing myself for both competitions together. And yeah, of course the main one will be swap uh, at the beginning. And then I will fully turn myself and probably st stop doing dynamics that much and focused only on the statics to, to take the best chance to reach that level, let's say, for a burning gate. That's nice. Yeah. Talking about um, dynamic elements, we all know and saw it on social media, I think uh, you catching the 720, so we know that uh, and p potentially you, you know it, but why do we never see it on, on a competition? I feel like that's a good question, but uh, you know when you're really professional in this sport and you know your potential and your limits. For example, me, I understand that I can win uh, a competition with, again, two big moves, let's say Shrimp 360 and maybe Frisbee. This is the only thing that I need, like a format like Street Workout Ultimate Battles, you know? And I realized that I can win it without this element and it's better to save it for the future, to come back with the craziest level. So it was just a choice that I that I catch and now I'm ready to see what I can do for the future. Nice. By the way, how, how was the feeling of winning Swoop two times? Um or like winning Swoop being the winner of the last year and then coming into Swoop five this year and having this on the one hand this pressure. On the other hand I felt like because there were athletes like Lysans, Eric Ortiz, people were not really um I don't know focused on on you winning again like it felt for me at least at least like this maybe not the people but a, a lot of athletes at least how did it feel like to have on the one hand this pressure or on the other hand having like um these legends in in the um in the race so for me personally to compete with these guys was just something insane especially with eric uh i was ready to accept him you know even before the competition because he's he is the one that is really similar to me lightweight world champion multiple times and the one that i i want to make not only battle but also to to do it for the community to do it for the sport like uh the good old times for example victor and andrea warosa you know for me these battles are super similar between me eric and victor warosa so uh yeah the feeling was crazy and uh the other thing is that uh when you, there is something that i feel inside me and people also understand that when I'm competing on every competition and I'm winning already one time, to win a second time is a crazy big challenge. Crazy big challenge that probably people don't understand how I feel, but it's like if I can explain, it's like everyone is not waiting you to win the competition again. Everyone is waiting you to, to see you down, you know? Everyone wants to see the new winner. Everyone wants to see who can beat Christoph, for example. This is what I'm feeling inside. But this feeling, for example, for a lot of people, I know people even on the highest level that are not ready to take that feeling because the pressure is crazy. It's so much, but somehow I learned how to turn it in a motivation and in a discipline to show that people I can do it. And there's nothing that can stop me to reach these goals. And imagine now it's number three coming. Imagine the pressure. Imagine the preparation that I have and the level. So why why i need to skip these things when there is only good good uh things that i can take from and i can level up even more i can why i need to skip it i need to level up so i'm in the action i'm ready to take it i'm ready to take the risk that's true and that's something i really appreciate about appreciate about you and i think it's uh, also a key of your success is to um take negative things let's call it negative things like the pressure like the the expectations exactly. from the people and to turn it and to, to turn, turn it, it into into power and to turn it into something positive um, exactly. it reminds me of the interview i had with uh, victor a few days ago um who is uh, also victor kamenov close friend of you um yeah. and he also sees his injury as a chance to focus on other things and sees it as a sign uh, and turns it into a power for something for him you know and that's exactly. something I think this mindset is something extremely crucial in calisthenics, but also in life. 
to take the things that happen to you and to turn them into something positive, something that fuels you and supports you. Yeah, it's a big challenge that if you're ready to take and complete, you after that you understand you're strong enough to keep going. So this is this is something important that you need to understand. When life gives you a, cha a challenge, you need to take it and you need to complete it. It's it's complete and keep going on the run forever. This is this is the quote that I believe in. Yeah, and in everybody's life there will be challenges. Some of the challenges are coming earlier, like with your head injury. Um, it came earlier in your life, so it made you stronger from the beginning. For some people, yeah. it comes later and they become stronger and more calm and self secure when they get older. But um, yeah, everybody will have these challenges and it's about uh, the preparation to be ready to accept them. Exactly. And we need to be really thankful about that. For example, I'm really thankful because imagine if nothing from this has happened in the past. Who knows what I will do now, you know? And I'm super thankful for every moment that I have and every moment that I, that I uh, fight and survive after. And now I'm, look, I'm living the life that I that I wanted and I'm happy, I'm doing my things, I'm doing everything with love. And for example, in the in the past, I was a kid uh, without any dreams, just training. I was in the gym focused and training. And of course I don't have dreams because I was a kid. And these things that happened to me in the past, they uh, make me realize what is the the life. And life is hard, but and it's not it's not for everyone to fight with these challenges. And I'm pr pretty happy about now and I'm moving forward, only forward. Yeah, and that's, that's the mindset you need. And that's the mindset what, what brought you there. So yeah, really chapeau, respect for that. If you would have to name an athlete that could bring you into trouble next year, uh, an athlete that is rising and uh, someone who is, uh, who has crazy potential, um, do you think these, like, who, who is it? Damn, hard question. It is. Mm -hmm. Let me let me think. Let me think. It's it's probably when when we can have a battle that will be close one will be probably after three four years or even more. But I can give a huge predict because you know I'm watching a lot of people. I understand the potential, the talent, everything, and I can say I can say who can take my place at this moment in the future and. If you don't stop, I'll say Romashka boy. He's for me. He's really talented, and he's a guy that is he's still he's still a kid for me that will rise, and this kid will shock everyone. I know it already, and he's shocking everyone already. But yeah, I think in the future, after maybe five, six years, or even more, if he don't stop, he's going to be like me, or even better. I remember us being at FIBO and after the Saturday, after the event day, you were <laughs> explaining to me what skills uh, Romashka boy did, uh, like a Jäger, if I remember well. Yeah, Jäger, Kachov. Uh, this is skills that people don't understand. Even high-level athletes, they don't understand how hard this is. And he's doing it like nothing, you know? So for me, he's already at the highest level in dynamics. There is nothing more to add. He, is, he can do everything. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, 1080. In the future and that's it but for for statics i can see now he's improving a lot in front lever that's really good and the weak point that he has is flange but he will fix it in the future he just need to gain more strength more um, muscle mass and everything he'll do it but this guy is talented he's one of the stars that i can see and i can put on the top right now for the future it's true his front lever is really crazy his dynamics are crazy or like front lever is becoming much better and uh, yeah. dynam dynamics are crazy talking about the planche um mm -hmm. there are so many tutorials out there so many progressions so many videos why are, are most people still struggling with planche what do you think like even after launching <laughs> and uh helping people with their planche in your programs as well i think i can explain like the biggest problem that people have with planche, they're training really wrong. Not only the techniques, but also the, st the system that they have. For example, I'll give you an example. Now I have a guy that I'm working with and he asked me, hey man, I want to learn straight arm touch, sat on the front lever. I want to increase my pull-ups. Uh, I want to do Maltese I, and I want to do this, this, this and this. We start to train. I prepare routines for him, for example, for SAT, I prepare for pull-ups, for Maltese and everything. 
and I explained him, man, at this level, if I can say by my side, by my point of view, if you want to progress in something, you need to focus on it. For example, you want to learn the sub and to make it maximum good for your level, you need to focus on this stuff. But you cannot push so much elements together. This is impossible. For example, people that are focused only to increase the pledge, they succeed. They can do it. In the future, maybe yeah, two, three months, one year, two years, or every people is taking like different time. And uh, there is other point, like other part of people that are training everything together and they're super surprised like that they cannot progress in anything. So that's why I'm, I'm telling you in my situation, I'm competing, I'm preparing myself with combos, I'm training everything, all sweet and dynamics and I'm progressing. So there is something that I realize if I train one element, even for two months, it's going to be crazy, you know? So people need to understand their goals and they need to focus on the one by one by one by one. And with the time, they will have that crazy level. If they focus from the beginning to push everything together, final result will be nothing. So two months is a good period to focus on one element only, you would say? Definitely. I, I promise you, if you have a system, if you have a, a good routine, uh, good uh, food, good eating, sleeping and everything, and you understand your goal about this element, for example, you have... Now, maybe you have three front lever pull-ups. You need to, you want to go to 10 and you need to focus on this thing. You know already your goal, it's 10 pull-ups. You need to eat good, to have a routine. Every day that you're training, you need to push yourself to upgrade more and more and more, to progress even more. And it's, it's impossible to not reach level. Yeah, probably you can, maybe you will not reach 10 in two months, in two months, but you'll be from three to six or seven or seven. So this is a combination that people need to understand. And when they work on it, they progress. And for example, in the online coaching, I have people that they're like, hey man, uh, I'm training front lever and I cannot increase my hold. I'm uh, stuck on 10 seconds. Can you help me? And I'm asking them what you're training. And she's like, oh, Monday I'm training dynamics. Uh, second day I'm training uh, front lever. Next day I'm training pledge. Next day Maltese. Second day I'm training combination. It's impossible. And when I ask them why you're training like this, he don't understand. He cannot explain. And I'm like, oh, you know, you need to focus on this. This should be your main goal. You need to put a lot of work on it. And that's how the things are happening. That's why people, that's why people from the online coaching, they start to, to progress more because you're, for example, people like me that understand, they make a plan, they make everything. And that the student is following the plan and the results are just a matter of time. So on the one hand, there are the people focusing on too many things at the same time. On the other hand, there are also the people wanting to work out seven times per week and then they injure themselves. And exactly. a, a program is, at coaching is really helping to find the sweet spot, the middle, and um, to find a good structure to yeah be able to work specifically, specifically towards one goal. Exactly. Like... Things for me now to understand them, it's super easy, but for, for some people, for a lot of people, actually, it's super hard to understand. They're training the planche, they're getting, for example, planche, uh, they're getting injured and they're like getting more angry and angry and they continue to pushing, push this element, push, push, and the injury is getting even worse. They like people need to be smart. They need to understand the goals, the, they need to have a system plan. Uh, they need to follow the plan, of course, and everything is happening when you have a system, when you have a plan and you're working smart. Smart working is the most important thing. Nice. And because we don't want to get people angry, that's our both goal. Uh, we prepared a, a discount code for you, all your programs uh, with, yeah. uh, with the code Gornation. Uh, you get like 15% off the planch program. Um, even with the, the coaching, um, I heard. So yeah. if you say uh, that you're coming to uh, from the Gornation podcast, you will also get 15% of the coaching. And you're soon also uh, launching the front level program, right? Exactly. Working on a big project with my team. And uh, we, are, we already uh, create a pledge revolution. People are extremely happy about it. It's for me, it's, I cannot say my program is the best. But I can say my program is effective and I put a lot of love and hard work on it. Everything that I know is inside. And the thing that I was really focused on is to be prepared with a lot of videos. We have more than 50 videos inside. And I am 
showing, explaining everything step by step, element by element, how should be done. And it's going to be the same with the front lever revolution. It's something big, really big project. To, it's, going, it's going to be uh, like six months hard working and we already work on it. We plan everything and it's going to be just insane. And people, people will understand. They just need to, to see it. That's crazy. So yeah, uh, we will put the links in the description for the programs and for the coaching as well. So as soon as the front level revolution is uh, launching, you can also get it with 15% off. Thanks, exactly. um, That's super cool. I think that's super. This, this is also the reason of the podcast to transfer, transfer knowledge and to give it from one generation, let's call it. We're still a young sport, yes. so there yeah. are not so many generations but to pass on the, the knowledge um, because otherwise we don't grow. If so, everybody, every calisthenics athlete has to learn the stuff himself and um, yeah, works a lot out alone without profiting from others' experiences, we don't uh, evolve in 10 years, 15 years, maybe even 100 years. Exactly. I'm, I'm really, the thing that I don't like in some athletes, I'm not going to say names, is that they're, when they have uh, a lot of followers, they become really famous and stuff. They're focused only in in their uh, potential and in their future, you know, and they will only want to make money. They only want to do things for them. And they don't, they totally uh, forgot about uh, the calisthenics and calisthenics is something that is giving you everything, you know, so you need to say thanks and you need to do the best for this sport and also for the kids for the future. And this is how, like you said, it's how the, the sport is growing so much. This is the, the way, the good way. That's true. And this is why I'm extremely looking forward to do the next interview, maybe not in two years, but even earlier. Uh, but at the point you're currently starting with YouTube, you uh, invested a lot into, um, the, the, into building a team. Uh, you have like a reliable team um, and you're building on YouTube, you're building programs, you're doing coaching, you're like expanding a lot right now. And that's super cool. So what, what content can we expect on YouTube uh, in the next uh, months and weeks? So YouTube, I can say to the people, we already, uh, with my team, we already have five or six videos done. It's extremely good uh, ideas, extremely good quality. And I just want to show that Christoph can do YouTube, you know, because the content is different and it's uh, more fun, more um, like good ideas inside. And people will like it for sure. Like I already post a really good YouTube video with Eric Ortiz and... I think people really liked it and they, they just don't know what is coming. It's really good. So guys, stay tuned and you'll see my YouTube growing like crazy. And I know you like the comment already. You'll see it's something special. And that's the thing uh, that we know from your past. If you do something, you do it right. And uh, you do it yeah. with 100%. So uh, I'm really looking forward to see a, a new YouTube uh, yeah, star um, in calisthenics because I remember back in the days, it was extremely important for me to, to watch YouTube videos, to watch, get inspiration, motivation from the videos from Lysan, from Melnik, from all these uh, people putting out content. And uh, on the other hand, also having tutorials, um, um, like uh, basic tutorials, how to learn muscle ups, how to improve your pull ups, et cetera, et cetera, um, on YouTube. And uh, I think someone with your knowledge and experience should, uh, should definitely um, yeah, give back to the community uh, because we're all like, um, a sport which is uh, built by the community um, on YouTube. So that's super, exactly. super cool. Exactly. Nice. Um, yeah, we have one more topic. Um, I would be interested in how, what, what do you think is your, uh, your favorite equipment in calisthenics? What is the most essential? If you could only take one to a, a lonely island, what would it be? Oh, this question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard one, hard one, but... I can say I already posted my favorite thing from Gornation product is the static bar. This is something that I really like, but I cannot just pick one. It's impossible. Like no way for me because, uh, you know, I'm training with wrist wraps, I'm training with pants, and this is something that is everywhere with me, something that I'm competing with. And yeah, if you give me a chance to pick three, will be wrist wraps, will be the pants and the static bar. This is all I need and I'm ready to inform and do crazy things. Why do you take the static bar? Uh, because I, I really like uh, the idea to have something that will give you a crazy potential to increase 
skills or variations and everything that you need to be more comfortable to perform your combos, not only in the gym, but also you can do it in home, you can do it outside, you can do it everywhere, you can bring it with you and it's super good. Nice. So yeah, I'm super looking forward to ship it to you as soon as possible. You tested it in uh, Madrid already at the competition and uh, also uh, during the, the shootings and the time in, in Madrid. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm super looking forward to send it out. Uh, the pre-orders just started yesterday. Yeah, I'm waiting, will be... waiting mine, waiting mine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they will be launched in mid-October. So yeah, it's time soon uh, for it. So yeah, um, tomorrow you're going to Burning Gate, right? Uh, to... uh, not tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, tomorrow is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. <laughs> no, it's not tomorrow. It's next day. <laughs> okay, so it's Thursday. Thursday, yeah. <laughs> okay. I so totally, have you ever... totally forgot the days in the, in the week. Yeah, so much. <laughs> so much. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, so have you ever been at Burning Gate? What is, what is your goal going there? Never again. Never again. Uh, never again. <laughs> yeah, sorry about this. Uh, never before. And uh, this time I'm going because uh, I want to support uh, my friend Netko. He's competing. Uh, it's his dream from a lot of years. And now he's ready to show the best that he can do. And also to have some great time with uh, my friends, uh, Andrea, my girlfriend. And also I'm there to, you know, this, this uh, travels, especially competitions, even if you don't compete, are really... Uh, really interesting and they can also increase your level because I'll see the level in statics and I'm going to shoot some crazy content there, have a great time with the other athletes, uh, we meet each other and we'll be, yeah, just insane travel for the experience, it's crazy good and Italy is a beautiful place. That's true and uh, yeah, I'd love to see Netco perform and I'm really looking forward to see his rounds because he's also one of the Fine. taller athletes. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's one eighty three, I think. So that's a lot. And he was he was eighty one kilo. Now for burning gate, he's seventy point five. Wow. Ten kilo down. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm really in burning gate. There are no weight categories, right? Uh, it's like no. one category. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Nice. So yeah, have a have a good trip there. I'm really looking forward to the content and uh, to the to the combos that you will definitely do with the other athletes and um, being there at the place and yeah. their content. It's really nice. Yeah, I'll have, yeah, I'll have guest performance, so I'll give my best for the round. And yeah, we'll try to Great. hit the highest level yeah, that they so have. Nice. Nice, nice. So yeah, uh, we're done with the interview. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, I know you're a busy man these days and uh, I'm really thankful awesome. for, for taking the thanks time and me. having a a short update um so that was super cool thank you yeah thanks for the invite i'm always enjoying when we do things like like this with you you know it's super good awesome then have a have a good day see you you too you too bye see you bye.